Okay, Happy New Year. This is our Chinese New Year preparation series. So again, no fancy video, no fancy setup, no fancy makeup. It's just to show you how I prepare a Chinese New Year's dish at home. So this is my working look, okay? And it's gonna be messy sometimes because there will be like stuff that we're preparing for other dishes, right? That's the pickled mustard green that we're drying out there. But now we're gonna make a turnip rice cake, okay? So it's actually very simple ingredients, but why do we make this for Chinese New Year? Is because turnip has a the similar sound in Taiwanese, similar sound of good luck. So it's a good dish to make for Chinese New Year because you want all the good luck and good and wealth, right? Don't you? So we're gonna try to make this. It's uh, the dish that you will always see at a dim sum restaurant. Um, yeah, but sometimes I do this in, and with some. Cantonese sausages or you know dried mushrooms, dry scallops, and I'm I saute them together. But today I decided to use this in a jar. There is all the goodies that I just said, and they're sauteed in the goose fat to perfection. So I'm just gonna use this jar, except for the sausage. This one doesn't have the sausage, but we don't need the sausage because it's so flavorful. So let's get started. All we need to do is to start uh, with peeling this turnip. Wash it first. Okay. When you peel turnip, you have to know. See, when you peel the first one, it's still white. You want to peel again to see this kind of yellow part to show. Okay, because the white part is still a little bit bitter. So you really want to kind of peel off the white part as well. Once you peel it really well, you rinse it again. What? Pat dry a little bit. Now we want to weigh the turnip because that decides how much rice flour that we're gonna put in. So this one's 595 gram. So I'll take it just 600. So for the uh, rice flour, this is not glutinous rice flour. This is long grain rice flour, okay? I, my proportion, I like soft, melt in your mouth kind of turnip cake. So my proportion is one third of this weight, okay? So our turnip is about 600 grams, so I'm gonna need about 200 grams of rice flour. All right, you can shred it with those things, you know? I personally, because I have a fear of that, because I always peel my skin off, and I chop really fast, so I just chop it myself. I just julienne it to the thickness and the uh, size that I want. And then the benefit of doing that is actually because I can control so that it's not super thin. So in a way that when I cook it, after, what, after all the process, when it's done, it's not all like melted in the, broke down. It's not all breaking down into the cake. So I can still, uh, when I eat the turnip cake, I still have like string of turnips in there and I like that. So I'm gonna do it that way. How easier and safer to do it. So that way you have a flat flat surface, right? And then you can just. All right, I'm just gonna keep chopping and we'll come back and measure the rice flour later. Okay, now we're done cutting the uh, turnip. I'm gonna measure this rice flour, long grain rice flour. So remember this is 600 grams, so this is gonna be about 200 grams. Okay, and we're gonna start sauteing this uh, turnip. Okay, we're gonna heat up our stainless steel wok. And like I said, before I will uh, use the dry scallops, the mushrooms and all that uh, to make this tourniquet uh, cake. But this year I'm gonna use this one. This is the St. Jack sauce and inside there's shrimp, dry shrimps, 
and dry scallops and all these yummy flavor and it's sauteed in goose fat so it's really really fragrant and delicious it's got this umami so i got lazy i'm just gonna use this and put it in to flavor our turnip cake it's kind of just like our traditional xo sauce xo jiang taiwan ren zhidao right anyways so we're gonna do that okay heating it up putting some oil I use rice bran oil for my Chinese cooking. Okay, I'm just gonna put it in. Yummy St. Jack sauce. I'm gonna be generous because it's Chinese in here, right? So fancy you go home. All right. And now you need to add water. So I never measure how much water I put in because I just kind of cover the turnip, right? But for you guys, I'm gonna measure it this time. Okay, I'm starting with a lot, about a thousand milliliters. So let's see how much we use. How much water you put in actually will determine how hard or soft the turnip cake is. For me, I like I said, I like it soft and melt in your mouth kind of texture. So I am using a lot of water. You know what, I'm just gonna use a little bit more. Yeah, so it will be easy. It's um. Let me see. 600 gram of turnip, 600 milliliter of water, and then one third, uh, 200 gram of the rice flour. Okay, now you wanna season it to make sure it tastes how you like it. And a little bit saltier because we're gonna put in the rice flour to dive, you know, so it's, oh, not this. Mm. So it will dilute the flavor a little bit. This is about a teaspoon. This, how much salt you put in, is really up to you. Everybody's taste bud is different, okay? So. Mm, tastes good. You don't need it to be too salty. Um, also because sometimes if you happen to make it a little bland, um, not as salty enough, people dip it in soy sauce and stuff anyways, so you're okay. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna let it cook, simmer for about five minutes. Okay, while it's simmering cooking for five minutes, we're gonna mix up our uh, rice flour with some equal amount of water. And then we're gonna make it into a mixture. Remember, how much water you put into this daikon thing, the turnip thing, uh, is up to you. Okay, this one is soft, melt in your mouth kind of texture. If you want it harder, uh, just put in less. Maybe 400 milliliter instead of 600. Or even 300. Okay, so now this one is well mixed and ready. We're going to put in a little bit of salt in there just so that it doesn't, you know, take away too much flavor from the turnip and what I like to do is to add in some white ground white pepper because ground white pepper actually really um, match with the turnip I'm gonna put it into the just a little bit because a little bit goes a long way you don't want to put it in too much Ooh, I want to sneeze now Ooh, 
All right, now that it's simmered for a little bit, the flavor will be blended together even better. I'm gonna try it. So good. So good. Then we're gonna put in the, uh, what's that called? The mixture, rice, flour mixture. You'll see. Just gonna mix this really well. Now I'm turning the heat off. The remaining heat is enough for me to do this. Just wanna make sure they're stirred and mixed really well, evenly. All right, now we need the mold to put this in. But you do want to brush the mold with some oil. I use sesame oil. Okay, little sesame oil. Just make sure you brush it all the sides and the bottom. Anyways, all right, I'm gonna peel this up. Oh, I probably just need one container this time. And then we're gonna steam it. I'm gonna make sure it's flat. Smooth up the top, the surface. And then on the top, I like to brush some more uh, sesame oil again so it doesn't dry out when we steam it. So I brush some sesame oil on the surface. Fun fact. So I always pronounce surface surface because it makes sense. S-U-R-F-A-C-E, right? Surface. Why this? And my kids just laugh at me and they're like, mom, it's not surface, it's surface. So they so I just learned that I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time. So now when I say surface, I'm so I so self-aware, you know, like, oh my God, is it surface or surface? Surface, surface. You're always learning, right? Anyways, we're gonna put it in the steamer. I have a huge gigantic steamer. Because that's how we roll in this family. I should have start, you know, started boiling the water when we were prepping, but you know me, my brain just scatters, so I didn't do that. Anyways, we're gonna put this on, and then once it's boiled, then we put the turnip cake in, and then it needs to be steamed for an hour. All right, now the water is boiling, so we're gonna put this in, and let it steam for an hour. Ooh, look at that. High heat. We'll be back. All right, it's been an hour. Our turnip cake is ready. I'm turning the heat off. Ooh. Mm. Just taking it out. Ooh. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's very soft because it's just cooked. So we are ha we're gonna have to let it cool down and put it in the fridge. Once it's completely cooled down, then you can easily cut it into little pieces and then you pan fry it. I cover it, but I'm not gonna cover it all because I don't want the steam to drip on the surface of the turnip cake. Surface. Okay, so, but then I don't, also don't want it to dry out. So I'm just gonna cover it, but leave a little space so that the steam can escape. Okay, like this. And then we will put it in the fridge, let it be in the fridge for overnight. All right, good morning. So it's been overnight and the uh, turnip cake is nice and cold. So it's easier to cut now. It's not as soft. So we're gonna take it out, 
So because we already uh, brush oil on the side of the mold, the glass um, mold, so it should be easy to come out, but I'm just gonna kind of do that. And then be patient, but you want to kind of have an angle and knock it a little bit and then it will start coming off, believe me. <laughs> it will come out. Okay, let's do it again. Never happened before. Who will hit it? Get out. Okay, one more time. Third time is the charm. See, it is coming out. It's coming out. Come here. Look, it's coming out. See? Woo, yay! <laughs> I, because mine is the soft, I like it really soft and melt in your mouth kind of texture. So it will be sticky, a lot stickier than the harder one. So I will put on some oil, brush some oil on my knife. I use sesame oil and so it doesn't stick on my knife when I cut it. And then you just cut them into the thickness that you want. You don't want it too thick. But you don't want it too thin either because mine is soft. If it's too thin, when you pan fry it, we need to pan fry it. So when you pan fry it, it will, you know, fall apart if it's too thin. So, and then the size that you like, this. And now all we do is just to pan fry it to golden brown and enjoy it. Okay, some oil. You want to be generous with the oil, even though you're using nonstick, okay? Because it's pen fried, okay? All right. Okay, put it in. And this cake, you know, we uh, steam it for steam it for an hour, right? So it is cooked. So all you need to do is just medium high heat. You just want to warm it up and you want the uh, to make it golden brown on the outside and that's all you need to do. Don't crowd it too much if it's the first time you do this yourself and then you make it as soft as mine. This is a little crowding but then you know I'm kind of experienced so that's okay because otherwise when you flip it, it you have you risk a chance to break it. So. Now it's been three minutes on this side, so we can flip it, look how beautiful. Okay, another tip. When you flip it, don't just use the spatula. Use a uh, chopstick to help you, so you don't break it apart. Okay. There. I love turnip cake, okay? Turnip cake, daikon cake. This is so good. Oh, you see? String of, of the daikon is what I am looking for. It's super hot. Super hot and super creamy, so people, when you eat it first, might be really careful, okay? Oh, mm. Because it's golden brown, it's crunchy on the outside and it's creamy on the inside because I like it that way. Oh god, it's so good. And that scallops and all that good flavor, it just in that creamy thing. And there was chunks of this daikon texture. Ah, so good. And you know what we like for dipping sauce? If you want. I know people use soy sauce or whatever. We love Maggie. We love Maggie with daikon mobile gal turnip cake. It's just perfect match. So if you, you should try it next time. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I can eat this every day. But if you want to really make it gourmet, do you know what to do? Do you know what to do? Hey, add a little jaja's chili oil on top. 
then you're really in heaven. Ooh, drizzle. Mm. Ooh, so good. I hope this helps you. I hope you make this for Chinese New Year. Happy New Year.